Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I am altering a little brown gift bag. I got these gift bags from the dollar store, and I'm using the beautiful Graphic 45 Gilded Lily collection. This is an absolute gorgeous collection. I'm using both the 12 by 12 and 6 by 6, and I'll have all the links in the description box below for the products that I've used. So I'm just measuring out the bag, and it comes to be about 8 by 10. So I'm cutting a piece for both the front and the back of the bag. And I'm going to distress the edges with Vintage Photo Distressing by Tim Holtz. And now to adhere my paper to the bag, I want to use some strong tape. So I'm using the Angel Craft Tape in one quarter inch. I'll go around all four sides of both of the pieces and I do add a couple pieces in the middle as well. And then I like to burnish down the tape with my bone folder and then use my paper piercer to remove the adhesive backing pieces. Now I'm adding some lace that I got from Walmart. It's a beautiful lace, so I'm just going to trim the top of both of the sides and finish it off with some flat back pearls. And I'm doing so with hot glue. This is really a great way to dress up a gift bag that you're putting a gift in. And that would be pretty as it is, but I do add a little bit more to this. So again, I'm just quickly adding that and then trimming off the excess. This is a beautiful die by Spellbinders and it's called it's called Imperial Square and it comes with four different pieces, the outside decorative piece, an inside piece and two corner pieces. So I'm going to use a piece of the 6 by 6 from the collection and I'm using both the outside and inside piece and a little bit of scotch tape to tape that down in place as I run it through my Sizzix. Now I'm running that through a couple of times because Graphic 45 is a thick paper. But what I also want to do because it's an intricate die is use some dryer sheets. I'm using about four different pieces, folding them in half and making sure that they cover the entire die. And now I'll run that through a couple of times and it's pretty tight going through, but that's okay. It'll get most of that, um, most of the decorative pieces out for me. Just removing my tape, and as you can see, that inside piece is just beautiful by itself. I love that shape. So now I do use my paper piercer and pierce through the release holes on it to help it release. And this was very quick to do. It only took me a few minutes to do this. So after I pull it from my die, I do have to, again, remove some of the pieces and look just how gorgeous this die is. This would look great on a five by five card. So I'm going to add that to the front of my bag, but I do want it to stand out a little bit more. Therefore, I'm using a little bit more of the vintage photo distressing and lightly going around that entire shape on both the inside and outside piece. I was just deciding which side of the paper I wanted to use. One is a little bit darker than the other, so I went with the darkest side. And now I'm going to add my glue. And what I, what I like to do after um, adding an intricate piece like this is take a scrap piece of paper and run it over the top. That way if any glue seeps out, it seeps out onto the paper, not my hands. And I decided that middle piece, I wanted a little more dimension to it. So I'm using some lightweight chipboard and I'm cutting out two pieces of that, which will then go behind my die.
those perfectly fit behind my die. So I will simply glue those together and then glue on my pattern piece of paper. And I love the little added touch that the dimension gives to it. So now I wanted to add a sentiment and I'm using the Sizzix Framelits with stamps. And this is a really cute stamp set, set to have. It comes with two different um, dies for each shape, a uh, matting piece and then the inside piece. So I'm pulling off the two that I think I might want to use and just holding it up to my project to decide. And I decided I like the banner shape one here. So I, I end up using that one and I'll put the other one back on the backing sheet. Now I'm pulling off the with love sentiment and I've never used this one before. So you'll see me stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper. It's a good way to, when you have a brand new stamp to condition it, you wanna, set, you wanna stamp it off a few times on scrap paper just to make sure there's no residue on it. I'm using some VersaFine Black Onyx ink and I'm stamping it on that cream colored paper but I remembered after I cut it out, which you'll see me do here in a minute, I remembered I wanted that piece of paper for my back piece, not the, the front piece with the stamping on it. So after I cut it out here is when I realized that I meant to do it that way. So I run it back through with that outside piece quickly and then off camera I stamp it again on one of the pattern pieces of paper, the with love, and that you'll see me glue to the front of this piece that I'm cutting out now. So I'm going to adhere that down and then adhere it to my gift bag. I do also ink the edges with vintage photo and now I'm so happy with how that looks. So I adhere that down and I needed a couple flowers on it. So I'm using the Heartfelt Creations Ariana Blooms die. This is a great die to have in your set. It also comes with a matching stamp as well, or you can purchase a matching stamp to go with it. So, but in this case, I'm using just the die and I'm going to run it through twice so I can get more flowers. I wasn't sure how many flowers I wanted to put on this gift bag. So in the end, I only end up using one of the flowers and I'm just quickly putting this together. I'm gonna to use the medium and smaller flowers. I'm using my Heartfelt Creations Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit. It comes with a 12 millimeter stylus in it so that by running it around in the middle, it breaks up the fibers of that paper and gives that flower dimension. And now I'm using the curling tool that comes with it and curling the smaller flowers that are going to go in the center of my flower. I'm curling all the petals on two of the smaller flowers. And then I'm simply hot gluing them together by alternating the petals. And now I quickly decided I wanted something different in the middle instead of the tiny flowers. So I'm using this spray cluster from Wild Orchid Craft. It's a beautiful color that matches the paper collection perfectly. So I needed a hole in the middle, so I'm pulling out my deluxe flower shaping kit again. It has a piercing tool and a piercing mat, and as you can see, I added a large hole in the middle, and that way I can put my stamens or my flower cluster in the middle. I also have a couple other handmade flowers there. I wasn't sure if I was going to use them. I end up not using them. And now I'm just adding a couple of leaves and then my flower to the center. And this makes for such a pretty gift. So now that I've adhered that down, I'm going to bend up the petals and make sure that it has a lot of dimension to it. Now I'm pulling out the tags and pockets from the same collection, the Gilded Lily, and I'm just adding my name to it so when I give the gift, they know who it's from and I'll just tuck that in the back there. And that's all there was to it. As you can see, this is a very quick way to dress up a gift bag and it makes for a great gift. Please check out Cut It Home's blog. I will have all the information linked there and there's lots of inspiration there. And also the products will be linked in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed.